Havoc interview two, scene A, shot one, take one. Passed my first test. <laughs> I played fifth. I mean, I wear a Zap watch every morning to wake the hell up, so it's nothing new to me. My name is Colin O'Connor. I am a uh, technician here at Havoc Performance. I've been here for two years. Yeah, two years. And yeah, we got, a lot of we, we got it. We got a bunch of. We, we work with a bunch of. Uh, you know, I'm a. I'm a sarcastic person, um, and you know, having people around me that are, are the same way. You know, it's it's fun. It's lighthearted. Um, you know, obviously it's serious. You got to get your work done, but you know, we can have fun at the same time. Um, and it's just you know, a lot of, a lot of ball busting, if you will. Uh, you know, but we we have fun when we get our work done. Yeah, usually I, I'm usually here at like. 6:30. Um, I come through. I you know I open up, and then usually it's a lot of you know, wiring um, for like the twin turbo builds. We usually have to do fuel pumps. We have to do uh, water meth kits, uh, wiring for the computers. So there's a lot of wiring. Um, usually we have some form of, of maintenance we got to take care of. Um, and just kind of make sure everything is, is done properly, everything is tested well. I didn't grow up around cars, like I always had an interest, I was always good with, with tinkering and taking things apart, putting it back together, um, but no one I knew knew anything about cars. Um, trying to figure out what I was gonna do for college or whatever, um, I spent a year at ESU, um, that didn't work, um, and I found out Northampton had an automotive program. Um, so I went through the Northampton automotive program, um, and I think it was 2013, I started a small independent shop in Stroudsburg. Um, I bounced from a few different independents for a few years, and then I was at a uh, Nissan dealer for about five years, and then um, I got an opportunity, uh, I heard of Havoc through a service writer when I was working at Abeloff Nissan. Um, I've been obsessed with the Viper since I was a little kid, um, so having Having the opportunity to come here was just kind of a no-brainer. It was a, a dream come true, if you will. Like I said, I didn't I didn't grow up knowing anything about you know mechanical sides of cars, so I I was a blank slate. So I was working on the side um, on the on the weekends and after work um, for for a bit, and then the time came when Mike said, "Yeah, I can use you full time," and it was a no-brainer. I jumped all over it. I've been to say obsessed with the Viper is not an understatement. I've been obsessed with Viper since I was seven years old. Um, I don't quite remember what got me into it. I don't know if it was just the look of it, the power of it, but something about it just it just drew me. Um, you know, and as a kid, you know, if I, the rare times I saw driving by on the road, I would lose my mind um, to the point where my dad thought I was like, something was wrong. And I was just like, no, it's a Viper. And he was like, all right, so you just kept going. But you know, it's, the Viper has always, it's been my favorite car since I was a kid. It still continues to be. Um, and it just, just so happens I have the lucky, very fortunate opportunity to make it my day-to-day -day job. <laughs> Honestly, just just having the opportunity to work on the Viper is, is the best part of it. Um, I actually have a, a story, pretty much, when everything started with this. Um, there's a, there was a time where my girlfriend and I were discussing possibly moving down south. I, mean, I was working at a Nissan dealer, so I, you know, it would have been easier to go down there and, and transfer to a dealer. She was like, you can do that. And I was like, honestly, I would just prefer to be working on Vipers full time. And she's like, well, find a place to do that. Where can you do that? And I was like, I don't know, Florida, Texas, I don't know. Um, and then like a week later, the, uh, the service advisor I was telling you about, well, it was towards the end of the day. and. I was just shooting the breeze with them at the end of the day, and the question came up, you know, if you weren't here doing this, and it was kind of to everyone, if you weren't here doing this, what would you rather be doing? And I was like, I'd be doing the same thing, but just on bikers. And he, was, and he looked at me, he goes, I know you could do that. And I was like, yeah, where, like Texas? He goes, no, right, right in Bath. 
get out of here. There's just no way. And he pulled up on Instagram, showed me, and I was like, you know him? He's like, yeah, I worked with him. I think it was at Advance. And I, was, I told him, I was like, put in a word, give me his contact, like, put me in touch with him. And he kind of laughed. I was like, I'm serious. Like, I'll leave here in a minute. Like, don't tempt me. And so he, he did. I messaged him. I talked to Mike online. Um, he, Mike was like, hey, whenever you have a chance, come down, talk to me, whatever. I was like, all right. Um, it was in January, I got injured, so I was out of work for like a week. And I was bored, I was like, hey, you mind if I stop by? So I got to talking with Mike. Um, Mike said, you know, we're, this was like early, early on. He was like, you know, if we have, if I have work that I can put you on, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll glad you put, you know, try you out. So it was like in March, um, I think he had a friend's older Camaro. So I, was, I did some work on that, and it kind of snowballed and progressed to come after work. Um, on the weekends when I had time, and then um, it got to the point where we were we were we were filling up, we were getting busy, and the opportunity. Mike was like, "Do you want to come full time?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm there." Um, left Nissan. Mike came and picked up my uh, my box at Nissan, and I felt like uh, if you watch Breaking Bad, I felt like Jesse Pinkman leaving on the final scene. You know, ah, yeah, it's kind of how I felt, you know, and uh, yeah. It was, no turning back from there. It's not only just Vipers, but you know, we have a, a kid I knew growing up, he, he had a Lamborghini that he brought to us um, just to do basic things on it, but still just, just to say, you know, I, I technically worked on a Lamborghini, uh, some Porsches, um, some Ferraris, so just, just being able to work on some of those really awesome unicorn cars, it's just, it's awesome. If you did have a Viper, what is the dream? Uh, I love the Voodoos. Uh, so to me, a Voodoo 2, uh, that would be kind of my dream Viper. Um, or some form of ACR Extreme. Um, I just love the black and red on the Voodoo 2s I've always just loved. Um, so to me, having just a, a stock Voodoo 2 would be amazing. Uh, the black and red. Um, I like the fit gens more just because I fit well into them. Um, and you know the performance something you can't really beat, but uh, yeah, the black, the black and red of the boot too. I love. I just I've, I've always loved the black and red combination. So.